Hi, thanks for listening. Uh, I want to talk about this article I read in the Huffington Post. It's in the Huff Post Women section. Uh, it's written by a Soraya Kamali, and she is a feminist, a satirist, and a media critic. The headline of her article is "Women in Politics: Why We Need More Women in Office." And uh, I completely disagree with this, right? Because we don't need more women in office, or or more women in government, depending on what country you're in, if it's Britain. Well, we need more women, female MPs, politicians, uh, in America. It's, oh, we need more women in office, you know. Or it's just the same cods, whatever side of the pond you're on. Uh, they probably do this shit in Australia as well, I imagine. Canada, definitely. Anyway, uh, it's not an exaggeration to say men rule, just a statement of fact. What the men actively seeking to subvert women's rights need to understand once and for all is that everything is a women's issue and women have had enough. Right. <laughs> See, the idea behind this whole article is that because there are more men in government, eh, it's men that are in charge, You know, which I completely disagree with, but I'll get to that. Eh, she spouts a lot of horse shit in this. This really is a lot of horse shit, I swear to God. Our country's rank for women's political representation, 78th in the world, is dropping and the gender gap in political ambition is growing with obvious ill effects for women's health, economics, education and work. This is pathetic and embarrassing. See, I actually agree that this article is pathetic and embarrassing, but oh no, she's talking about, oh forget it, but anyway, uh, it's the usual shit, you know, because there's not got a lot, as many women as men in the uh, the, the government, uh, the 78th in the world, you know, for having, like, the least amount of women. It's absolutely pathetic. I mean, the fact that they've even got a, a table for things like this is ridiculous. Um, anyway, it goes on to say, I, I've cut out a lot of filler in the article, because, as I say, it is filled with steaming piles of horse shit, right? But one of the things, uh, three things have to happen, right? Women and men who get it have to... One, see, men who get it, you know, manginas. One, use their voting rights, right, okay, so they have to vote, right, okay. Two, run for office, big mistake there, I'll point that out in a second. And three, be visible and loud, right, again, first of all, be visible and loud, this is the problem with feminists and women's groups and all that shit. You seem to think being loud is a good thing. It's not as important as being correct, right? Anyway, the second one, run for office, it says, women and men who get it have to run for office, right? So my head's going to explode because there's like a paradox thing going on here. What if only men who get it, because it's, it's mostly men that enter a career in politics, something that they never take into account. Um, what if it's only men who get it that run for office and get elected? then the government will still be full of fucking men. You haven't thought this through, have you? You shouldn't have included men in that. Stupid. Anyway, um, right, they have to vote. Right, again, I've cut some of this shit out, but her votes is a coalition of 51 women's organisations focused on Heath, Economic and Rights for Women. That, so that's what the H-E-R stands for. Heath, Economic and Rights. Uh, her votes. Right? I, I don't know what Heath is. Whatever. Uh, if you aren't clear on what the threats to rights you take for granted might be, because you are busy, tired, trying to feed your family, stressed about work, taking care of your parents, because uh, every woman does that. They're always busy. They're always busy on Facebook. They're always um, tired because they're on Facebook. Uh, they're always trying to feed their family with fucking microwave bullshit. Uh, they're stressed about work. I write, what, sitting in a fatter all day on a phone? I like, please, you know what work is. Uh, and taking care of your parents. How many fucking women take care of their parents? Piss off, it's not that many, Christ. Uh, as if it's only them that's doing it as well. Fuck's sake. Take five minutes to consider the fact that we are actually debating whether or not women should have access to birth control, or maybe why your name change at marriage might make it difficult or impossible for you to vote because of targeted voter ID requirements that don't affect men. Ugh, all the crap. Women make up the bulk of low-wage earners because they're lazy. Oh, she doesn't say that, but I think she, she meant to put that in. Uh, because they're lazy. Our heads of households and are literally sick and tired of not having access to basic health and childcare. They don't have access to basic health and childcare. Are you shitting me? And 
our heads of households, right? Try prying that role out of a woman's hands. You, you won't be able to do it. They won't get won't get it out of her grip. Women want to do that. This is what these fucking feminists can't seem to understand. The amount of women that want to do do that, be the head of the household and be at home with the kids, they don't fucking understand. Uh, they just assume that. But, but most women must want to be in politics and running businesses. No, they don't. They, they fucking don't. Fuck's sake. Um, at the end of the day, the best way, way we can speak out is to vote, explains Lisa Matz, the top policy advisor for the American Association of University Women, which recently launched the It's My Vote, I Will Be Heard campaign. Probably another load of shit. I didn't look into that campaign. There's only so much feminist horse shit I can handle in one day. Uh, but, I, but she is right, though. The best way you can speak out is to vote. If you're not happy, vote. You live in a fucking democracy. You spoiled, spoiled, pampered, Bastards. Run for office. The 2012 project is a national non-partisan campaign determined to address this recruit, train and mentor women candidates. Why does it matter if women have a voice in politics? Clearly because women's specific rights and interests are not protected otherwise. How insulting to all male politicians, by the way. In addition, there is no way to separate the benefits that accrue by gender if you accept the fact that women's issues include literally everything. Or what they mean is they want a fucking or fucking stick their oar into everything. That's what they mean. Uh, healthcare, the economy, foreign policy, education. When women become legislators, they one are more actively involved and advocate more in gen gender salient issues, women's health, reproductive rights, childcare, and the economy. Yes, that's a women's issue too. Number two are more responsive to constituents. Number three, are more focused on cooperation, less on hierarchy. Number four, understand what transvaginal means. See, I think that's a dig at some politician that probably said something. I don't know that much about it, but uh, it's crap. But number two and three, she has no fucking, nothing to back this crap up. She just says it. Th they're more responsive to constituents. Based on what? Based on what? <laughs> are more focused on cooperation, less on hierarchy. Um, based on what? Which, which the, the, where does it show that men are into hierarchy and not on cooperation? Based on nothing! She just puts those two in. The last one's probably some kind of crappy joke. But the first one, she's actually fucking right. She's right with the first one. And that's why there's not a lot of women in politics. Because when they run for a fucking, any fucking political position at all, what do they do? Oh, I'm going to help women. I'm going to look out for women's health. I'm going to look out for women's reproductive rights. Not men's. I'm going to look out for women and childcare. Not men. Uh, oh, and the economy affecting women. Uh, it's, everything is about women, women, women. And they wonder why just under half the population doesn't bother their ass voting for them. They don't get this. They don't understand this. If you, any politician, it doesn't matter what you are, what you look like, or what way you were born, any politician at all who focuses specifically on one group uh, is not going to do well as a politician, ex unless that group is the rich. Right? That's, it's that simple. Right? There are no groups you should focus on. It makes you an incompetent politician otherwise. But if you do focus on the rich, you'll do pretty well. Uh, but all this crap is just... Uh, the goal of the 2012 project is to increase the number of women in Congress and state legislators by taking advantage of the once-in-a-decade opportunities of 2012. Constituent members include a broad range of organisations dedicated to training women across the political spectrum to run for office. When women run, they are just as likely as men to win. But they are not running. The study details exactly why, and it's not because of a biological mandate. It is true that women participate in government and their numbers have increased since they started. And yes, there are some very visible women, but their visibility creates a false sense of influence and parity. See, I've always hated this shit about, oh, we need to increase the number of women in politics. It's always a lot of horseshit because they just don't understand. One person one vote. It's that simple. The people aren't, not only aren't, don't want female politicians in, probably because they're very biased in what they do, uh, but not a lot of women run, you know. But this is one of the things they try to, to, to get to as well later on about encouraging young girls to uh, take a career in politics. But 
it creates a false sense of influence and parity when you see visible women, you know, in, go in government. What false sense? What are you talking about? They're there. They're doing the job. You don't want to accept uh, that, that they're there because it, it completely makes your argument look foolish that women are somehow oppressed. So you'd put it down to uh, just to create a... When you show women, you know, when they're visible and that, it just creates a false sense of influence and parity. Piss off, man. You can't fucking win with these people. You really can't. Again, why does it matter? Well, first, there's the basic issue of the value of a representative democracy to citizens and pretending that we have one. We're attached to that idea. Second, young girls can't be what they can't see. It's a vicious circle. Third, there is a matter of how women operate as elected officials. Despite their low numbers, female elected officials make a difference in the issues they prioritise. The bills they sponsor and co-sponsor, the output they generate and the extent to which they mobilise their constituents. What a fucking load of crap. Let's start with number one first. Uh, the representative democracy. It's important because they're attached to that idea. Well, no one gives a rat's ass what idea you're attached to. Just be attached to one idea. Democracy. One man, one vote. Yes, I did say man, lesers, you'll just have to deal with it. One man, one vote, democracy. That's what you've got. You've got the vote, so shut the fuck up. Absolute load of crap, haven't they? Oh, well, well, there's so many women in society, so there should be so many women in government. Why? Why? I exactly can't fucking answer that question ever. Never answer that question. Second, young girls can't be what they can't see. See, this is absolutely... See, see if I had a daughter, this would infuriate me, this bullshit, right? I mean... It... If my, if my daughter doesn't see a woman inventing a hoverboard or curing cancer, I don't want that to put her off the idea of doing it herself. Oh, you can't be what you can't see. What a load of fucking shite. Yes, you can. See, if men thought like that, we would, we would still be living in caves. We really would. We'd never have made it to the moon. Fucking hell, never. Oh, well, uh, I, I can't go to the moon because I've never seen anybody else do it. I mean, fuck off, man. What a fucking terrible thing to say to young girls. Well, you can't be what you can't see. What a load of crap, man. I'd never tell my daughter that. If I had a daughter, I would tell her she could be anything she wanted. Fuck if you've seen her, seen it before or not. Jesus. Third, there is a matter of how women operate as elected officials. This is funny because... All you have to do is say is, right, despite their low numbers, replace female with male in this same fucking bullshit applies. The exact same bullshit just applies because that's what it is. Pure babble, that's all it is. Uh, so just say, male elected officials make a difference in the issues they prioritise, uh, the bills they sponsor and co-sponsor, the output they generate, and the extent to which they mobilise their constituents. The same thing can be said about males. It's, it's absolutely fucking st stupid, one load of horse shit. Absolute load of horse shit, man. Many people just believe that women aren't interested, not ambitious enough, can't be bothered with all the ugliness of the public political sphere. However, the reasons are more complex. The study, completed by Professor Jennifer Lawless of American University's Women and Politics Institute, what a mouthful, and based on interviews with 4,000 male and female potential candidates for office, revealed the following, right? This is what the study revealed, right? One... Women are substantially more likely than men to perceive the electoral environment as highly competitive and biased against female candidates. Two, Hillary Clinton and Sarah Palin's candidacies aggravated women's perceptions of gender bias in the electoral arena. Totally putting blame on those two there. What a, what a, what a low, low thing to do. Uh, three, because see, the thing is they're assuming that because Hillary Clinton and Sarah Palin have vaginas, that everyone will assume that anybody else with a vagina will be the same as them. But... People don't think like that. Only fucking morons think like that. Anyway, uh, three, uh, women are much less likely than men to think they are qualified to run for office. Four, female potential candidates are less competitive. Now, just pair that with the first one. They, they see the electoral envi environment as highly competitive, right? Uh, and then number four, female potential candidates are less competitive. I mean, so there you go. They're not competitive and are going into a competitive business. What the fuck do they, th do they expect to happen? They're less confident and more risk-averse than their male counterparts. Uh, see, again, they don't take as many risks as the men, and they wonder why they don't do as well. Oh, they probably don't make the same sacrifices either, and still wonder why they don't do as well. Women react more negatively than men to many aspects of modern campaigns. <sighs> Women are less likely than men to receive the suggestion to run for office from anyone. Now, see, see, they need a big, they need a big boost. Oh, you know something? You should be a politician. Oh, if you, 
If you need that, you're not going to be a good politician. Seven, women are still responsible for the majority of childcare and household tasks, which they uh, grab onto like a stag beetle, they don't let go. And families where both adults are working generally in high-level careers. Women are roughly six times more likely than men to bear responsibility for the majority of household tasks because they choose to do it and they want that role. And they are about ten times more likely to be the primary childcare provider because they choose to do it and want, to, want that role. This division of labour is consistent across political party lines. You see, she's put seven there, right? She's put seven points from this study, but I think they missed something out, so I added another one. Number eight, boo fucking who? Fuck's sake. Be visible and loud. The We Are Women March on Washington is being organised to take place on April 28th in all state capitals and the District of Columbia. To be clear, this is not a march against men. This is a march against systemised sexism. It is a match for equal human civil rights for women. Men and women who believe in these rights are good for everyone are marching. Right. Uh, if it's not a march against men, right, why would you have to say that? Is it a march against goats? Why are you not saying that? Is it a march against black people? Why are you not saying it's not? Why did you say it's not a march against men if it isn't? Fuck. It's, it's a, a march against systemised sexism. There is no systemised sexism. You live in a democracy. You have the vote. There are no barriers to stop you from running for office except yourself. You're the only barrier in place. No other barriers. You've actually got a bit of help as well because you get free mentoring, don't you, from the government? Jesus Christ. Absolutely unbelievable. Uh, so there's nothing stopping you. You've got the vote. You've, you, you've got it sweet. You've no fucking idea. It really annoys me how you don't understand how spoiled rotten you are. Uh, to be clear, this is not a march against men. What a load of horse shit, man. Anyway, it says, it is a march for equal human civil rights for women. I mean, they say that as if they don't have that already. They're, they're the most fucking pampered, spoiled fucking people ever to be on, the, on this planet, man. God. Men and women who believe in these rights are good for everyone are marching. I believe these rights are good for everyone. Uh, I'm not marching. I didn't march. I didn't go to the shitty march. Yeah, I, I, I believe in that shit. So that's not true. Total bullshit. But there's a bit in the, the, bit in the article. It's in bold writing. And it sums the whole thing up for me. It's what it really means is women stepping up, running for office and winning. Yes. That's what men have to do. So step to it. Fucking step to it. Fucking waiting on. You're so fucking wonderful. Obviously we'll, we'll have no choice but to vote for you because you're so fucking wonderful at your job. Looking out for only half the population. Fuck's sake. However, real equal opportunity does not exist just because formal barriers are removed. Direct discrimination and a complex pattern of hidden impediments, everything from insufficient mentoring to informal yet powerful networks, prevent women from running for office being selected as candidates and getting a legitimate and effective share of political influence. <sighs> the only thing stopping women from doing all that is themselves. See, that's not me going there. Uh, now, I've not done any training to be an astronaut. Uh, but the reason I'm not an astronaut is because of, I don't know, direct discrimination and uh, a complex pattern of hidden impediments. No, what would a crap? Direct discrimination that she does not even give examples of. If it's direct discrimination, she would be able to give examples. Uh, none, nothing at all. She, she would say, like, oh, we're not allowed to drive. No, she doesn't say anything like that because nothing exists. And a complex pattern of hidden impediments. Ah, so the reason women aren't making it is because of... Oh, well, we can't tell you because they're hidden impediments. Again, load of fucking horse shit! Uh, countries that implement quotas are defining equality, not in terms of individuals and opportunity, but in terms of institutions and results. These countries believe that if there are barriers to equality, cultural, behavioural, political, religious, then measures that compensate for those barriers are needed to achieve true equality. In this way, gender quotas do not discriminate against men, but compensate for biases that tilt the playing field. We like to pretend that those biases don't exist. No, sweetheart, we're not pretending. Those biases don't exist. There is no tilt in the playing field. And when you say, countries that implement quotas, blah, 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 well, there's a big difference between those countries and your country. In those countries, they're wiping their ass with their fucking bare hands and fucking leaves. In your country, you've got double quilted fucking toilet roll. There's a big fucking difference, sweetheart. Don't understand how fucking spoiled you are. 
Speaking earlier today at the announcement of the Her Votes campaign, that's that Heath one, <laughs> fucking morons, <clears throat> Avis Jones de Weaver, Executive Director for the National Council of Negro Women, oh, for fuck's sake, how, how victimised can you get, know what I mean? Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm a Negro woman, you can't criticise me. Oh, fuck off. Uh, explained, women will not be silent. Women will not be bamboozled. Women will not be complacent. We know what is important in our own lives. Uh, here's the thing though, uh, uh, Negro women, whatever your fucking name was. Uh, who said women would be silent? Who said that they would be bamboozled? Who said that they would be complacent? I'll tell you who said that. Fucking you said it. You're the one that brought this shit up. Men aren't saying this shit. You are. So fucking shut up. Anyway, enough is enough. See, I agree with that, but she's not meaning it in the same context I do. You know, enough is enough with the horse shit. It's pure horse shit. There will never be 50% women in government unless they cheat their way there. Because women aren't interested in a career in politics. When they are interested, what do they do? Oh, I'm going to look out for women, 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 women. And it's, it's just, why do you expect people to vote for you? People, with, even women with sons. Why are women with sons going to vote for your ass when all you look out for are women? Fucking idiots. Anyway, uh, I'll leave it there for now. I'll leave a link to the article. Thank you for listening. Until next time. Again, I've cut some of this shit out, but Her Votes is a coalition of 51 women's organisations focused on Heath, Economic and Rights for Women. That, so that's what the H-E-R stands for. Heath, Economic and Rights. Uh, Her Votes. Now, I, I don't know what Heath is. Whatever. Uh, if you aren't clear on what the threats to rights you take for granted might be, because you are busy, tired, trying to feed your family, stressed about work, taking care of your parents. Because uh, every woman does that. They're always busy. They're always busy on Facebook. They're always um, tired because they're on Facebook. Uh, they're always trying to feed their family with fucking microwave bullshit. Uh, they're stressed about work. <laughs> I write. What, sitting in a fatter all day on a phone? I uh, please. You know work is. Uh, and taking care of your parents. How many fucking women take care of their parents piss off, it's not that many, Christ it's if it's only them that's doing it as well fuck's sake take five minutes to consider the fact that we are actually debating whether or not women should have access to birth control or maybe why your name change at marriage might make it difficult or impossible for you to vote because of targeted voter ID requirements that don't affect men Ugh, all the crap women make up the bulk of low wage earners because they're lazy oh she doesn't say that but I think she, she meant to put that in uh, because they're lazy, are heads of households and are literally sick and tired of not having access to basic health and childcare. They don't have access to basic health and childcare. Are you shitting me? And are heads of households, right? Try prying that role out of a woman's hands. You, you won't be able to do it. They won't get, won't get it out of her grip. Women want to do that. This is what these fucking feminists can't seem to understand. The amount of women that want to do, do that, be the head of the household and be at home with the kids, they don't fucking understand. Uh, they just assume that, but, but most women must want to be in politics and running businesses. No, they don't. They, they fucking don't. Fuck's sake. Uh, at the end of the day, the best way, way we can speak out is to vote, explains Lisa Matz the top policy advisor for the American Association of University Women, which recently launched the It's My Vote, I Will Be Heard campaign. Probably another load of shit. I didn't look into it. I can't be honest. There's only so much feminist horse shit I can handle in one day. Uh, but, I, but she is right, though. The best way you can speak out is to vote. If you're not happy, vote. You live in a fucking democracy. You spoiled, spoiled, pampered bastards. Run for office. The 2012 project is a national non-partisan campaign determined to address this recruit, train and mentor women candidates. Why does it matter if women have a voice in politics? Clearly because women's specific rights and interests are not protected otherwise. How insulting to all male politicians, by the way. In addition, there is no way to separate the benefits that accrue by gender if you accept the fact that women's issues include literally everything. Or what they mean is they want a fucking... Or fucking stick their oar into everything. That's what they mean. Uh, healthcare, the economy, foreign policy, education. When women become legislators, they, one, are more actively involved and advocate more in gen gender salient issues, women's health, reproductive rights, childcare and the economy. 
Hi, thanks for listening. Uh, I want to talk about this article I read in the Huffington Post. It's in the Huff Post Women section. Uh, it's written by a Soraya Kamali, and she is a feminist, a satirist, and a media critic. The headline of her article is "Women in Politics: Why We Need More Women in Office." And uh, I completely disagree with this, right? Because we don't need more women in office, or or more women in government, depending on what country you're in, if it's Britain. Well, we need more women, female MPs, politicians, uh, in America. It's, oh, we need more women in office, you know. Or it's just the same cods, whatever side of the pond you're on. Uh, they probably do a shit in Australia as well, I imagine. Canada, definitely. Anyway, uh, it's not an exaggeration to say men rule, just a statement of fact. What the men actively seeking to subvert women's rights need to understand once and for all is that everything is a women's issue and women have had enough. Right. <laughs> See, the idea behind this whole article is that because there are more men in government, eh, it's men that are in charge, You know, which I completely disagree with, but I'll get to that. Eh, she spouts a lot of horse shit in this. This really is a lot of horse shit, I swear to God. Our country's rank for women's political representation, 78th in the world, is dropping and the gender gap in political ambition is growing with obvious ill effects for women's health, economics, education and work. This is pathetic and embarrassing. See, I actually agree that this article is pathetic and embarrassing, but oh no, she's talking about... Oh, forget it. But anyway... Uh, it's the usual shit, you know, because there's not got a lot, as many... Yes, that's a women's issue too. Number two, are more responsive to constituents. Number three, are more focused on cooperation, less on hierarchy. Number four, understand what transvaginal means. See, I think that's a dig at some politician that probably said some. I don't know that much about it, but uh, it's crap. But number two and three, she has no fucking, nothing to back this crap up. She just says it. Th they're more responsive to constituents. Based on what? Based on what? <laughs> are more focused on cooperation, less on hierarchy. Um, based on what? Which, which to, to, where does it show that men are into hierarchy and not on cooperation? Based on nothing! She just puts those two in. The last one's probably some kind of crappy joke. But the first one, she's actually fucking right. She's right with the first one. And that's why there's not a lot of women in politics. Because when they run for a fucking, any fucking political position at all, what do they do? Oh, I'm going to help women. I'm going to look out for women's health. I'm going to look out for women's reproductive rights. Not men's. I'm going to look out for women and childcare. Not men. Uh, oh, and the economy affecting women. Uh, it's, everything is about women, women, women. And they wonder why just under half the population doesn't bother their ass voting for them. They don't get this. They don't understand this. If you, any politician, it doesn't matter what you are, what you look like, or what way you were born, any politician at all who focuses specifically on one group eh, is not going to do well as a politician, ex unless that group is the rich. Right? That's, it's that simple. Women as men in, pol in the, the, the government... Uh, they're 78th in the world, you know, for having, like, the least amount of women. It's absolutely pathetic. I mean, it's, the fact that they've even got a, a table for things like this is ridiculous. Um, anyway, it goes on to say, I, I've cut out a lot of filler in the article, because, as I say, it is filled with steaming piles of horse shit, right? But one of the things, uh, three things have to happen, right? Women and men who get it have to, one... See, men who get it, you know, manginas. One, use their voting rights. Right, okay, so they have to vote, right, okay. Two, run for office. Big mistake there, I'll point that out in a second. And three, be visible and loud. Right, again, first of all, be visible and loud. This is the problem with feminists and women's groups and all that shit. You seem to think being loud is a good thing. It's not as important as being correct, right? Anyway, the second one, run for office, it says, women and men who get it have to run for office, right? So my head's going to explode because there's like a paradox thing going on here. What if only men who get it, because it's, it's mostly men that enter a career in politics, something that they never take into account. Um, what if it's only men who get it that run for office and get elected? then the government will still be full of fucking men. 
You haven't thought this through, have you? You shouldn't have included men in that. Stupid. Anyway, um, right, they have to vote. 